It's time for us to head to our uh, meat and livestock report and from MLA is Ripley Atkinson. G'day Ripley, how are you? Good, Wayne. Good. Thanks for having me. Well, it's been an interesting week. Uh, I was talking uh, to uh, one of the farmers who comes off the York Peninsula in South Australia, and uh, he was telling me about uh, the uh, Dublin sales of sheep. And uh, just anecdotally, uh, he said that uh, there's some uh, dropping in price some that because of uh, increased yard numbers. We have had a bit of a dry spell through some of our regions. Is that showing at a wider level? Yeah, we're certainly numbers numbers dependent on on the region and certainly the season is the key driving factor. Uh, actually, saw numbers at a state and national level tighten up this week, and that's also a product of softer prices we've seen in the market. So producers are preferring to retain stock in the hope of an improving price in the weeks ahead. Does that put any pressure out there on say there's more feeding of grain and maybe hay going out to stock with some of those uh, uh, shooting uh, green feed? that has now dried out a little bit. Are we seeing, uh, we're hearing through more hand feeding? Certainly, dependent on the, on where you're located and how uh, fortunate you've been in terms of rainfall, we are starting to to hear that that feeding has begun in certain parts of, of the eastern seaboard, and and that's obviously reflected of the dry season that that people have experienced so far this year, which does mean feeding may come a little earlier. But there's also other parts that are that are well supported with a good body of of feed for their sheep and cattle to uh, to graze into winter. Let's go then to uh, what actually happened at the markets and. I'm told that uh, in the beef side of it all, uh, you've had um, the highest slaughter numbers since 2020. Correct, yeah. Last week, uh, the country processed 119,460 head, uh, and that was, yeah, definitely the highest number since 2020. And it was an increase compared to the same week in uh, 2022 of around 37% or 32,000 head. So a very strong uptick in volume when you compare the week's um, of 2022 to 23, and, and it's just a continuation of the strong herd rebuild we're seeing across the country, which is delivering those those large numbers of, of finished cattle to market. So what does that um, mean in the context of um, uh, farmers holding the stock um, uh, to their farms uh, to keep the uh, numbers up? Because if you're obviously slaughtering more in that particular uh, period, uh, there must be an increase in the herd. But at the same time, we're seeing numbers leave the farm and go to sale. So what was the picture that we had this last week to bring that result? There was a couple of things. Firstly, in parts of Queensland, uh, Roma through through up to, to Charters Tower has got some good rain. And what that did was give producers a little bit of confidence to hold their stock a little longer, retain some numbers, put on some more weight. And then in other parts of the eastern seaboard, um, NVLX at Wodonga, Tamworth and Singleton, we actually saw numbers increase, which isn't surprising either. So that's a typical thing you see in winter for producers to offload stock leading into winter if they're concerned about the availability of of grass or pasture they have to get through winter, which isn't a very good growing season for most of the eastern seaboard. So the market dynamics and fundamentals actually at the minute are, are operating the way they should be. So supply is increasing in some parts, but then we're also seeing the impacts and, and the support and confidence weather can provide to producers to retain stock on farm. All right. Now, is that um, happening the same, say, in the sheep and lamb presentations? Uh, is that following the same sort of trends with the beef cattle? In some aspects it is, yes. But the other thing about the, the lamb sector now that we're, we're um, or the flock is, is very much supported and um, focused on prime land production for a large part of, of the eastern states. It also depends on the finish and quality of lambs producers have, um, or, or the finish and quality producers have put into lambs, and then also whether they've got that feed available to, to get the finish and quality they want. We know the market prices in the sale yards at the minute um, have softened, but there are very good quality lambs available. And sheep and lamb producers, alongside their cropping programs, will determine whether to sell or market their stock based on the finish and also whether they've got grain available on farm, for example, to feed them through through periods of winter or, or dry or cold conditions. Yes, there's been some cold um, frosts across some of our areas, which is, uh, means uh, in Victoria particularly we've had uh, frosts through the Mallee uh, and it does appear that's going to have an impact. I know you've got a report that you're working on uh, and uh, you'll have a, a full indication uh, next week, but what, what's the general consensus from the latest ABS data? The ABS data um, was something everyone's been sort of highly anticipating, came out this morning. It's mandatory reported data 
for slaughter and production for sheep, cattle, poultry, pigs. And the data this morning that we've, uh, we've, we've just gotten access to has shown a 13.5% increase in cattle slaughtered this quarter um, to 1.7 million head, and it was a strong uptick in production as well. So when, when we're looking at that, it's not unsurprising because, as I mentioned, like last week, we saw the highest number of cattle processed since 2020, and that's clearly flowing into these ABS figures. Looking at sheep, it's even more significant. So sheep slaughter in, in the March quarter rose 37.5% to 2.4 million head. And that mutton production as a result of that was also up 32%, which means we're obviously producing a lot more stock. And when you look at the, the mutton numbers processed, the mutton numbers offered to the sale yards this year, they're very, very high. And they're the highest they've been certainly since early 2020 and into 2019 during the drought. In space, not as significant only an increase of around 5% quarter on quarter to 5.7 million head and production only lifted a little bit, but that's because carcass weights have declined. All right, Ripley Atkinson, I know that uh, we've got Dan Crouch who's going to speak to you next week and when he does, uh, I'm going to get him to um, let you know how much a stake is in Japan right now uh, because uh, all of that slaughter that's going on here looks like it's uh, providing some very, very good stakes that Dan's been having this last week uh, over in Japan, but I'll let him tell you about that next week. Excellent. Look forward to chatting with Dan.